I think power is a topic that's often overlooked in astrophotography. Now, maybe that's because it's really obvious, but I think it's anything but obvious because as usual with astrophotography, there's more than one way to approach this, depending on what equipment you have and what it is that you're trying to achieve. So in this video, I'm gonna break down how I power my astrophotography equipment here at home, and then also break down some other options that are available to you. So let me go through how I power my astrophotography equipment here at home, starting off with an outside socket. I had this installed when we moved into the house for the sole purpose of using it for astrophotography. From the outside socket, I've got an extension lead. It's a 20 meter long extension lead. It's way longer than I need it to be, but they're pretty cheap. So I thought, why not grab 20 meters? And that extension lead has four sockets on it, which is enough to power all of the equipment that I need it for. All of my cables are mains cables that I can plug straight into the extension lead with the exception of one, and that is the dew heater controller. And that has a 12 volt adapter at the end of it. Now, what I've done here is I've bought off Amazon and I will leave a link to this in the description down below is an adapter that goes from a 12 volt to a three pin plug. Now, if you use something like the ASI Air and are using dew straps, then actually you probably don't need this. You can just plug that straight into the ASI Air, but I don't have that. So I've got it plugged into a dew heater controller so that I can control the temperature of them and not have them on full power all of the time. And that powers all of my equipment. So that includes the Raspberry Pi, which I have Astroberry running on it. And I then remote desktop into that from my laptop inside. That also has power for the mount and my uh, dew heater controller and also my astro camera. Now, of course, if you're out in the field or if you're camping or something like that, and you don't have mains power available to you, then this setup is completely worthless to you. So I'm gonna break down some extra options for you in case you don't have mains power available. Now, this first one isn't really one that I would recommend and that's from own personal experience, but I'm gonna include it anyway, just because it's not that expensive and it will last a while and it will power a reasonable amount of equipment depending on your setup. And that is to start with a car jump starter battery now the pros of this is obviously it's portable so you can take it anywhere however it's pretty heavy so if you're about to go on a long hike somewhere at altitude to take a wide angled shot of the milky way then this is probably not what you're after it's also relatively cheap so if you're just wanting something that's cheap and does the job then this will work for you but it's not an option that I would recommend and actually either mains power or one of the other options is something that I would go for instead. And now onto the cons. So it is a lead acid battery. It's not really designed to be used in this way. However, it can be done and that's why they include things like USB sockets and three pin plugs on them now. If it completely loses charge, so it goes completely flat, then it will never recharge to full capacity again. It's also got a limited lifespan. Now mine lasted for about 18 months before I couldn't trust it to run long enough for a full imaging session over the winter sky. So if I was doing say a six hour imaging session, I couldn't trust it to image for that long. And lastly, it, they're very weather dependent. If it's cold, expect the battery to deplete much quicker. So in the summer, I didn't really have an issue with using this, but over the winter, I really couldn't trust it. And especially with the indicator on the front, I didn't even find particularly reliable to tell me how much charge was actually left in it. So I throw it out there as an option because it's cheap and it will work for a lot of people in a lot of circumstances. I was using a, a DSLR and my Astroberry and I had the mount connected to it. And that was all I had running off it for those 18 months. and it lasted pretty well, but it is one of those things where after about a year or so, or if you're running something more intensive, then you'll want to upgrade that pretty quickly. Which leads me nicely into the next one, which is a lithium ion battery pack. And an example of this would be like a, a Jackery uh, portable power station. I see these are quite popular now and they're not the only brand out there, but they're one of the more popular ones. So have a look, do some research. There's plenty of them out there to, to look at. Uh, but Jackery is a good place to start. The only thing I would say with these, and this is true of all um, sort of portable um, power actually, is make sure that it's got enough um, power and is actually capable of running your astrophotography equipment for at least one full image imaging session. The good side of these is that they are much more lightweight and much more portable than a sealed lead acid battery like we were speaking about a minute ago. And they'll also have a much longer lifespan. So a lithium ion battery is something that you would find in your smartphone, for example. The battery life will be a lot better. It doesn't matter if it goes completely flat, it will just recharge back up to 100% and it will give you a constant amount of power all the way down to when it's flat. The cons are, of course, as I've just said, it could go flat. It is a battery after all. So that's why it's really important to make 
make sure that it will work for your setup with a full imaging session. And they're also not particularly cheap, but they will last for a long time. So if you're somebody that likes to get away from light pollution, don't image in your garden very much, you're out in the field, then it's absolutely 100% worth the investment. And I think it's definitely worth spending that extra money. This will give you a much better solution than the uh, car starter battery that I just spoke about. And lastly is what I'm going to call the home solution, the, the DIY box, if you like. If you Google how to do this, then there are lots of um, weird and wonderful designs out there that mean you can actually just make your own power box. And the great thing about that is that it will be tailored exactly to your needs and to the setup that you have. You can make it work for whatever it is that you're trying to do. And it would also be an inexpensive way to fully power all of your gear, and that's great. The downside to that is that you'll clearly need an amount of uh, sort of technical knowledge to be able to do it, or you need to be very, very good at um, following instructions and feeling confident in your own abilities. And it's also quite a lot of effort at the start so it will take you quite a while to get that setup done but once it's done it's done and then it's fine and it will probably last you forever of course make sure that it's in a completely uh, weatherproof box uh, this is an option i would absolutely recommend if you've got a bit of technical know-how and are confident in your own ability but if you're somebody that's just not got the time available and they've got a bit of money to spend then i'd recommend just buying a lithium ion battery pack because it will last you for a long time. It's not the cheapest, but it will get the job done no problem and it will give you a reliable amount of power for an amount of time. So to quickly summarize, always go for mains power if that is available. You obviously cannot beat mains power. If mains power isn't an option, then I would recommend a lithium ion solution, a bit like a Jackery or a home solution if you're happy to go through that extra effort at the beginning to create your own solution. Please give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe and comment down below with what solution you use for your power. My name is Nick and you've been watching Astro Exploring and I'll see you in the next video.